With business having slowed, what are you gonna do to make sure you thrive in this new market of ours? What's happening? I'm JC Agajanian, broker associate with the Whistle Realty Group at eXp, bringing you the recap of the Fast Forward Movements Monday Morning Mastermind as we do every week. And today we had a few topics planned, but the first one was so popular that we kind of just camped out on it and kept talking about circle prospecting. That's right, it seems boring. It seems like something that most of you probably don't want to do but there's a wide variety of ways you can utilize circle prospecting. There's lots of different tools that you can use. And of course, there are great stories of success that come with putting your head down, making the calls and going out and creating the inventory that seems to be lacking so significantly in almost every market throughout the States. So what are some of the best practices and how are we going to utilize circle prospecting to dig up new listings and have yourself a fantastic 2024? I mean, hey, year's almost out and we're already thinking about the next year, so let's plan for it. Before we get into it, no matter what you do regarding circle prospecting or which angle you take, whether it's targeting expireds or for sale by owners or absentee owners, whatever you do, you've got to be consistent. Like you can't kind of get into something, think it's a cool new idea, and then drop it, right? It's not just consistently week by week, but how many hours are you gonna do? How many days per week are you gonna do? You've gotta have that consistency if you wanna have the results that you're looking for. So we talked a lot today about absentee owners. Uh, it's a great place to start because you almost never really run out of data, uh, certainly if you're in a decently sized metro area. And you can get this information from a lot of different dialers and sources that are out there. Um, Mojo was one that I've used for a lot of time. I've had great success with it. It integrates with lots of different CRMs, which is cool. So once you make that contact and book that appointment, hopefully, uh, you can plug it straight into your CRM. You can tag it, you can stage it, you can do the things you need to do in your CRM straight from mojo and it's also got single line dialer you can do a triple line dialer and if you want to pay for it you can go multiple lines i think you can go up to eight or nine lines with a mojo dialer which is kind of crazy i'm not at that level dial in lots of phone numbers at the same time it lets you know when one of them clicks in you pre-record a voicemail in the event that somebody picks up while you're on the phone with someone else and uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, there's other resources as well. One of them has a resource in the name, it's Cole Realty Resource. You can use Vulcan 7. And a lot of these dialers not only function to take a list and work through it without you having a hand dial, but it also has resources where you can pull in the list or get the information that you need in order to make these calls. Because of the do not call list, some of these different sources may not give you a lot of information where you live. So you might have to play with different tools and that means signing up and then canceling different things to make sure that you're getting the most amount of phone numbers and contacts for the area where you live. So we heard that feedback from some of the people chiming in on the mastermind this morning that you may have to play with a little bit to figure out how you can get the majority of them because we heard stories of some some systems only having maybe a quarter of the available sellers in a given filter preset as opposed to another one where you got maybe more than half or something like that. So keep that in mind. What kind of scripts are you going to use? You know, there's lots of different things you can say, but overall, really the idea is to use an introduction that's going to get you into almost the same conversation regardless of who you're going after and what kind of seller they that you're targeting like i said whether they're for sale by owners or absentee owners or um, expireds or you know divorce sales or whatever the case but you know something to the effect of hey john hey i saw your property on one two three main street and you know with prices being where they are right now here in san diego i was just curious if you'd ever consider selling your property in the future if it made sense for you and, and the prices matched up. You know, it's just kind of like a cold open, get straight into it and then have your conversation. You know, if they say no, you know, 
don't just hang up. <laughs> we actually heard stories this morning of a couple different agents, uh, one of them a coworker on my team and another one across the country saying they actually turned wrong numbers into either buyers or a listing appointment uh, and, and sold property. Now, one of them said that buyer actually became uh, a lifelong buyer, referring business to him and everything, just, just from a wrong number. One of them gave us his line for the wrong number, actually. He said, hey, sorry about that, but while I've got you on the phone, I'm a real estate broker. I was calling a client. Is there any chance you're considering making a move in the next year? Just another quick, simple line, and that turned into a lot of business for him. Assuming you do have the right number and you get a no, like, no, I'm not thinking of selling in the future to that first question we talked about. Well, prolong the conversation as much as you can. Ask some further probing questions. You know, hey, that's cool. You know, how long have you owned this property? Or if it's rent tenant occupied, oh, sweet. You know, how long have those tenants been in there? Have they, you know, been treating you? You know, is it a decent experience so far? Or you know, if it's vacant, hey, ah, interesting, really, how long has it been vacant? And how come you don't have any tenants in there? Or how come you haven't done anything with it? You know, just take the conversation where it goes, right? And another great follow up question is to ask, assuming they don't want to sell it, they've already told you no, yeah, that's cool. Would you be interested in knowing what it's really worth? Uh, obviously, they, the sites online are really worth what you pay for them, which is nothing. So uh, it's it's no trouble of mine. I make customized reports for my clients and, and past clients all the time. I'd be happy to rip one out for you and just send it over via email. And the majority of the time, they're gonna be happy to say, yeah, I would take a professional's opinion and a customized report for myself. And the cool thing is when you do this, now you're gonna get an email address because you didn't have it before almost all of these systems that I mentioned earlier just give you names, addresses, and phone numbers. They don't also come with email. So now you've got a name and an address and a phone number that's good because you're having a conversation with him. You get the email as well, and now you've got a solid person to put in your database. And even if they are not a now seller, there's someone you're gonna want to follow up with in the future and stay sticky to them once you've learned a little bit more about the real deal, what's actually going on in their world. Another approach is something you've probably heard plenty, you know, the idea of, hey, hi, Mr. Seller, or whatever the case may be. I've got a buyer desperately looking to be in your specific area. And when you talk about the area, don't call it the area, call it the neighborhood. And when you call it the neighborhood, you wanna be as specific as possible. So I'll give you a great example. I live in San Diego County. I live in San Diego City. The neighborhood I live in is Point Loma, but there's subdivisions, or not subdivisions, but there's sub neighborhoods that are even more specific. So I might say, I've got a buyer desperately looking to be here in Fleet Ridge. Fleet Ridge is literally a handful of blocks. It's not a huge area, but the more specific you can get, the more real it sounds, the more awareness that you display, that you know this neighborhood, and it, it's just, it's less generic, right? So you tell them, hey, I've got a buyer who's desperately looking to live here in Fleet Ridge, and I'm wondering, who do you know in the neighborhood who's considering selling? The obvious knee-jerk reaction is gonna be no one, right? Just like when you walk into store to buy something and say, hey, how can I help you? And you say, no, I'm just browsing. Well, the, the chances are 20 minutes later, you're gonna walk out and check out the, and buy something, right? And that's, that's the knee-jerk reaction that we give. So, okay. Well, that's fine. Um, is there any chance you might be open to selling yourself in the future? You know, shift it back on them. And, you know, maybe say, hey, like if you could wave a magic wand, where would you go at that time? Just get into conversation. Another thing you wanna do whenever you can is to ask them their magic number, right? What is their magic number? Like, it's kind of like a make me move type of thing. If you were to get any number, like what would you, what number would be strong enough to make you think, I, I, I gotta sell this place because that's a great number. And if they say, oh no, I'm not never selling this or uh, that there is no magic number, it'd be like, really? So if I offered you 10 million for this house right now, you wouldn't take it. Maybe you, you laugh a little bit, right? Keep it real, um, but then go into it. And, and a lot of times you can get that out of them. You make a note of it, you make a list of it. You gotta track who you've got and where they are because you may come across a buyer in the future who 
would be willing to give them that magic number. And you also have to keep that in mind when it comes to marketing and staying in touch with these people for the future. Another huge thing to keep in mind is the general metrics. Do a little research, find out on average how many calls like the ones you're making, whether they're for sale by owners or expireds or you know, uh, divorce family law type calls or if they're absentee owners, figure out what the averages are. How many people do I have to call to make contacts? And how many contacts from these type of people do I need to talk to to make appointments? Because it can be grading. This is a numbers game and you don't wanna start getting down or depressed or discouraged because you're not having success if you haven't even gotten close to the average yet. Another thing to keep in mind is that some people answer their phones in the mornings and some people answer their phones in the afternoons and evenings. So switch up your call times. You could go through the same list at different times and collect different types of contacts from people. So don't just call the same people all the time at the same time, switch it up. Once you get into the system you've chosen as well and you are feeling more comfortable with the tool you've chosen, Play with the filters. Give yourself a little better chance at the odds because like I said, this is a numbers game. Um, some of them have like a most likely to move filter that you can throw on, especially if you are looking at a daunting list from an area that you wanna target. Use some of these filters to help increase your likelihood of finding someone who actually has a motivation to do something once you actually get in contact with them. It's a great way to just move the needle forward as you're doing this. And just like I said, when we started talking about this at the beginning, consistency is key. So what you've got to do is, is make it part of your weekly routine and you've got to make it a non-negotiable. You can't allow scheduling a showing or running out to a property inspection or doing any of the other millions of things that we do as agents to come as a priority over this new prospecting effort that you've taken forward. You've got to be consistent and you've got to make it hard and fast. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Even better, set your list out the day before. You know who you're going to be calling, what type of lead you're going to be calling the next day, where they are. Have it loaded up in your dialer so you don't have reasons to find procrastination when it comes to sit down, strap on the headset, and dial the phone. Get in a good mood when you're calling these people. Maybe call a friend real quickly. Don't waste time for a half hour shooting the shit, but like just maybe get your energy up and going in the right direction so that when you hit those phones, it's coming out of you. People can see you smiling through the phone and you want that to happen. Finally, you wanna be calling with intention. You, you wanna be focused first and foremost on building relationships because the nature of these types of calls, you're not gonna be having come list me's raise their hand and say, come on over right now, right? But we should have the intention of setting appointments. That is the whole point of this game. Of course, we want nurtures and we want meaningful conversations and we want to collect as much data as we can so that we can stay in touch with them in the future. But the goal is to set an appointment and get face to face with people, even if right now is not their timeline. As long as they're not saying it's going to be 10 years, if they're going to do something in the next several months, book an appointment now, get in front of them, build that relationship face-to-face -face that you got started over the phone and take it from there. That's gonna wrap it up for today. We spent a lot of time talking about this and frankly, we could have spent more time on it because lots of people have experience in this department and a lot of people were talking about having great success with it. As usual, I am happy to chat or answer any questions you may have. You can hit me up right here and I look forward to talking to you soon.